The Democratic Party is in much greater peril than its leaders or its supporters recognize, and it has no real plan to save itself. It's true, it seems like it's the Republican Party that's in crisis, with its very extreme, very unusual candidate. Barking Carnival Act. Unstable. I regret those comments that he made. And it's true that pollsters believe that the presidency is more likely than not to stay Democratic. But all that hides something more important. Since Obama's inauguration in 2009, the Democratic Party has been obliterated at the state level. And it has no plan to make up the gap. So let's rewind to Obama's election. You can see the map looked a lot more blue back then, right? Back then, Democrats fully controlled 20 state governments. Now this is a current map of state legislatures. And four of those 12 states where Democrats control both houses, they have Republican governors. That means Democrats only have total control in eight states. For the 23 states with Republican control, that's been a huge, unprecedented wave of restrictions on abortion, the spread of anti-union right-to-work laws into once union-friendly territory, redrawing of districts, making it tougher to vote, tilting the electorate on balance, richer, whiter, older, and large-scale layoffs of teachers and other public sector workers who are likely to support Democrats. Now, to be fair, it's not new for the party in the White House to lose states. Obama and the Democrats have lost 68 House seats, 11 Senate seats, 10 governorships, and 15 state legislatures since he became president. But every two-term president has seen numbers go in that direction because of what's called wave elections, a backlash to continued control by one party. And you can see that pretty clearly in this chart of state control. The country turned strongly against Democrats in 1994, two years into Bill Clinton's tenure, and then turned strongly in their favor during the latter half of George W. Bush's administration. But one problem is that continuing to keep power will make a wave election to rebuild Democrats on the state level highly unlikely this November. Or the next election, 2018. By that time, political scientists would expect more of a wave against them if they stay incumbent. But another problem for Democrats is that since Obama has been successful personally and Clinton is viewed as likely to win, the party's moved left in its national ideology, even though moderately liberal ideas can actually be enacted in Congress. And that's because Congress looks pretty similar to the state legislature's charts. Democrats haven't been weaker in Congress since 1949. So policies that are more left-wing aren't likely to help Democrats win the House or win in states. Now, it's true that this November, Donald Trump's unpopularity could pull some Republican candidates down across the board. But Democrats counting on that to rebuild the party need to consider that the vast majority of governors and other statewide elected officials won't even be on the ballot until 2018. Democrats are notoriously bad at getting their base to turn out for midterm elections. And Hillary Clinton is not viewed that popularly herself, so by 2018, Republicans might have an unpopular president to run against. So while Democrats seem pretty good at winning presidential elections, they're realistically not going to keep that streak up forever. When they do lose the presidency, Democrats are going to find that unlike Republicans, they have almost nothing to fall back on.